One of the longest lasting and most popular bands in the UK has had a significant update for 2020, with the changes visual, technical and mechanical. Best medium panel vans The VW Transporter T6.1 has a redesigned front end with revised LED daytime running lights, as well as a new front bumper and radiator grille combo. The van now sports lateral model designators the little chrome plates that stick out from the headlight units on the front wings and carry the van's model name for all to see. It's inside, however, where the changes are most keenly felt. The latest VW infotainment system now features technology straight out of the brand's passenger cars, and the new electronic steering system allows for a variety of advanced safety kit to appear on the transporter for the first time. The range kicks off with an 89 bhp unit that returns between 33.6 and 39.8 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle in a short wheelbase, low roof transporter panel van. If you step up to the 108 bhp TDI 110 engine option, the economy penalty is slight 32.5 to 37.7 mpg combined, and at the top end of things the 148 bhp TDI 150 unit gets a 6-speed gearbox and exactly the same fuel economy rating as the equivalent 5-speed TDI 110 models. The T6.1 may look different at the front with the new grille and LED headlight setup, but things are pretty much unchanged at the working end. VW continues to offer the transporter in two wheelbases, with three roof heights and four gross vehicle weights, delivering load volumes of 5.8 cubic meters to 9.3 cubic meters with maximum payloads of between 772 kilograms and 1,309 kilograms. The Volkswagen Transporter has always been at the forefront of van safety tech, but the facelifted T6.1 has stepped it up even further. There is a very generous amount of safety kit available as standard and beyond that there are still plenty of option boxes that can be ticked to boost your van safety credentials. Adaptive Cruise Control, Automatic Post Collision Braking, High Beam Assist, Hill Start Assist, Front Assist with City Emergency Braking, driver alert and trailer stabilization are all carried over from the T6. Now, however, driver steering recommendation and crosswind assist, first seen on the crafter, are also present on the transporter. The transporter continues to be a hugely impressive performer on the road, particularly in terms of its ride comfort. We tested a series of models with light loads on board and all served up a smooth ride while taking the edge off the bigger bumps and potholes build quality as strong throughout the transporter cabin with tough plastics that look like they can withstand plenty of punishment. The groom is an issue for both passengers and driver in the latest models and anyone much over 6 feet tall would be well advised to try the van for size to make sure they can get comfortable before making that buying decision. At least those wanting the three-seat cabin layout will find that the middle berth is more spacious than on many rival models. Electric windows, central locking and heated electrically adjustable wing mirrors are standard, while the driver's seat has height, lumbar, reach and rake adjustment. There's also a 230-volt socket next to the driver's seat end, when specified, a lockable compartment sitting under the double bench seat on the passenger side. A strange quirk is that all T6.1 models are only available with USB-C ports, up to four are available. Volkswagen is looking ahead and future-proofing the range, but USB-A is easily the most popular connection at the moment so many people will be unable to hook up their phones.
Renault's traffic has been updated to meet emissions legislation. As well as new engines it gets some worthy new equipment. Although some auto missions remain cargo and practicality the most recent updates to the traffic don't touch the elements that have made it a popular choice with many buyers in the medium van sector. The loading bay and the cabin storage are both left largely untouched, which is great in some ways but slightly short of the class best in others. The space on offer in the rear loading bay is excellent, with the load-through hatch that comes as standard on most trims a particular highlight, it means that the traffic offers the longest loading length in its class for slim items like poles and pipes. You get this from the mid-level trim upwards and it means you can carry items up to 4.15 meters long without having to open the rear door. The storage is good, too, with up to 8.6 cubic meters in the longer model with the high roof. The existence of that high roof is a welcome element from the traffic. With the Vauxhall Vivaro now sharing the same structure as the Citroen Dispatch and Peugeot Expert, the number of vans in the medium sector that doesn't offer a high roof variant has increased. The most recent update brings some added clarity to the rear, too, with new LED lights that boost visibility. There aren't loads of them, but they are bright and plentiful enough to illuminate the general load bay. Interior The visual updates to the interior are less comprehensive than those on the outside, with the addition of some chrome details the most eye-catching. However, a hard-wearing upholstery will be appreciated more for its longevity than its luxuriousness. The other notable addition is the upgrade of the infotainment system for the range-topping model. It lifts the cabin to the standards of Renault's car range, as it is a smart-looking and relatively simple affair, and the addition of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is a welcome boon. Running costs despite the notable change in engines, done with the more stringent emissions legislation in mind, the impact on fuel economy is not quite as noteworthy. The mid-level engine, for example, only improves its official rating by around 2 mpg on the like-for-like -like official test. The official European figures are around 52 mpg, but the UK vans come with slightly more equipment so might see a bit of a drop in that figure disregarding the official figures, there are bits of kit that come as standard to help boost economy. The fitment of stop start as standard helps on this front and the eco button dampens down the throttle response to help out those that are less able to regulate their own right foot. Reliability 2020 Renault Traffic Panel Van Review View Gallery rarely as anything not tried and tested in the van sector, and the Renault Traffic doesn't buck that trend. It comes with a pretty standard 3-year, 100,000-mile warranty but the servicing intervals are a well-spread 25,000 miles or 2 years, which suggests Renault has built up plenty of confidence in the traffic's durability. Performance The change from 1.6-liter to 2.0-liter engines hasn't radically transformed the way that the Renault traffic performs, but it does bring a slight improvement. There are now three power options on offer, with the middle version, with 145 horsepower, the one that suits the van the best. The larger one brings a touch more power at 170 horsepower but honestly the mid-range model has plenty of power and performance to suit almost every need. The most eye-catching addition to the traffic is the 6-speed EDC automatic gearbox. It is a wonderfully smooth box that is similar in operation and feel to Volkswagen's dual-clutch DSG equivalent. Renault has gone from not offering an auto in the traffic to offering one that is so enjoyable and relaxing to use that it is arguably the pick of the range, if you can justify the couple of thousand pounds to upgrade from the manual gearbox.
the Puj the Peugeot expert had a complete overhaul in 2016, with a new platform, improved looks and a range of safety kit added to the equipment list. All of this should make the expert popular with middleweight van buyers in the UK, although with a number of strong rivals in the sector, it will have its work cut out to make an impact. OT Expert brings MPV style tech, safety and efficiency to the mid-sized van sector the blue HDI diesel range meets Euro 6 emissions standards, and they offer the best economy and emissions in the mid-sized van sector. The 1.5-liter engine delivers 99 bhp, while the larger 2.0-liter engine comes in 119 bhp, 148 bhp, and 178 bhp outputs. All vans get a 6-speed manual gearbox as standard, although the 178 bhp version has an 8-speed automatic as standard with steering wheel paddle shifters. Torque figures range from 210 Nm to 370 Nm. The most powerful 178 bhp engine is only available in top-spec asphalt and sport edition trims. The range starts with the Expert S, although this still gets twin sliding side doors as standard, a full steel bulkhead, 16-inch wheels, ESC, central locking and deadlocks, driver and passenger airbags, DAB radio with Bluetooth, front electric windows, cruise control and a driver's seat with height, rake, reach and lumbar adjust. Move up to professional trim, and goodies such as air conditioning, electrically heated mirrors and a 7-inch touchscreen for audio with mirror link smartphone compatibility are added. Then there's the expert asphalt, which adds a classier look to the exterior that includes body-colored bumpers, mirrors and door handles, front fogs, LED daytime lights, auto lights and wipers, front and rear sensors and a parking camera along with electric fold mirrors. The professional model will attract owner drivers with its extra perks like the 7-inch touchscreen system, aircon and the modework load through bulkhead and seat, while the asphalt adds body color bumpers and mirrors, LED DRLs, 17-inch alloys, metallic paint and rear parking camera. Prices start from around £22,000 plus VAT so look pretty competitive, as you'd expect. Unfortunately most of the expert's high-tech safety kit comes as part of various option packs, and you could easily add a couple of grand to the list prices if you want it all. Adding sat-nav to the touchscreen system will cost you a couple of hundred quid, too. But it's the official figures that count, and the expert is one of the best mid-sized vans for economy. The most efficient engine on the WLTP test is the Blue HDI 100 that can return 44.2 mpg on the combined cycle with CO2 emissions of just 130 grams per kilometer. The 2.0 Blue HDI can muster 40.5 mpg and 142 grams per kilometer in 120 guys. Go for the Blue HDI 150 and you can expect up to 41.3 mpg and even the range topping 178 bhp engine with 8-speed auto manages 39.4 mpg. All versions of the Peugeot Expert share a 1,400 kg maximum payload, but the compact stands out for its excellent loading length of 3,320 meters in a vehicle that's only 4,600 meters long. The standard van has a 3,670 meters load length, and the long version 4,020 meters. Width between the wheel arches is 1,260 meters, and the three vans have a maximum load volume of 4.6, 5.3 and 6.1 cubic meters respectively. However, this isn't very big when compared to rivals such as the Renault Traffic, which has far more cargo volume. As well as having an upmarket feel, the expert also benefits from a range of practical touches in the cabin. The vans have 49 liters of storage space around the cabin, including two glove boxes on the passenger side, an A4 sized compartment atop the dash, a pair of cup holders, a luggage compartment beneath the bench seat, and large door bins on both sides. There is a 12 volts plug, plus jack and USB connectors in the lower glove box so no shortage of connectivity options. However, one niggle we have is that the tray next to the USB socket doesn't have a grippy, rubberized finish, so if you corner a little bit quickly, 
your smartphone or other device that's plugged in could go flying across the cab. <laughs>